Ah, uh, don't you hate this when inserters are stuck in the extended position because they could not output their contents to the wagon? I'm taxi and uh, I hate this, so I designed a station, uh, a station system that like does in, in which this quote unquote problem does not happen. So let's let's see how to set it up. You have like this nice blueprint book with all these blueprints and some of them like at the end are like complete stations you can plop them down here there is a normal station and a compact station the compact one is like uh, more compact but as a limitation like you only get uh, up to six different items in each wagon so yeah there, there's that if you want you can use it uh, so to set it so to set it up, basically you need uh, a train which has the right requests. Like for the normal station, the requests must be these ones. You can pause the video here and copy all the uh, requests to your to all the filters to your wagons. Like these are for the normal station. The, this next train has the wagons for the compact station, this one, and uh, these are the wagons, so here they are. I will probably put a picture somewhere with all the wagons together. Also, there is another blueprint, which is not included in the, in the stations, which has this configuration here. It's called the bot mining uh, preset, so you can do that if you want. So yeah, let's copy this here for later. I will need it later, but whatever. So now that you have your train set up with all those things, you go to the station and turn the these four combinators on on the normal station or this on on the compact station. And as you do that, the chests will start requesting all these item items. Uh, you can see the requests by hovering over one of the power poles, and they are the the signals in the re red wire, basically. Now they don't go down because there is no train. But as soon as we get a train here, which is not set to go here, so let's set this train to there. Whatever, let's go. Now, uh, the train will unload the chests, and as you can see, the, the red signals go down and disappear. When they disappear, it means that that signal is uh, that, uh, that the train is full of that item, basically. So yeah, that's how to set up the thing with only the blueprints I got, uh, I gave you. But if you want to set up your own stations and stuff, uh, keep watching, I guess. Let's begin by deleting this stuff. In the blueprint book, if you want to make your own station, you should start with the station and control blueprint, which is this. After that, you might want to use this to put another fuel loader if your train has more than one locomotive. Otherwise, you can just uh, ignore it and go on. This other blueprint is to put power poles and that are already wired, and you should put them uh, as desired, like depending on your, the length of your train, you know, whatever. Now, again, from the blueprint book, you can see like there are some presets. They're called preset trail layer. Mining, landfill and stations, fortification and boss for mining. You can take any of these blueprints, which are basically these things here. They're just these plus these. And paste it here. Like, as you paste it, you will see there is like this uh, constant combinator, which is not connected to anything. What you have to do is to copy it and paste it in the, the station, basically, and then delete it, otherwise you can't go through. And 
after you set your train, you can turn it on. Uh, but until you set the train, you should turn, leave it off, you know, whatever. So let's make this train, let's... locomotive here, let's... You all... Also, let's move a little forward. So we can put another... Wagon. And... Yeah, let's say you want to custom... You, you want to customize your own uh, block here. You can do that pretty easily, still with some other blueprints. You should get the loader blank uh, blueprint and paste it here. And how to set it up? Basically each of these, uh, I will call them rows, is set to react to one item. So like this row will react to the letter G, this will be letter H, and the letters are basically nothing. So if a train stops here, nothing will happen. But as, you, as soon as you set it up, they will work. So let's set these two to butter chest, for instance. You have to set up these two. Every G has to become the item you want, or every H, every I, you know. So now this row will will output the chests to the to the wagon, and there's that. But what if you want to like split the the cargo between more chests, like for rails in this? example. What you can do is delete some of this stuff, starting from the A side, basically. Let's say you want four chests, so you delete all the four. It doesn't matter because these two are connected to this pole. And you can do the same <laughs> in this side from the L side, but you will, you will see later. So then you look for the these blueprints, basically the full chest with split load in this case. Let's say you want three here, you can delete from the L side. Okay. These are still connected. And you take the three one, and rotate it and put it here. And now, all these new uh, machines that you've got are set to like one variable. In this case it's four. And in this case, let's say you want uh, you want the blue belts, you just <sighs> like replace all the force that you see with the with the item in question. It's kind of a pain in the ass, but you know this is a station for nitpicky people. So yeah, like in the inserters, you can you can copy the second inserter, basically not the first one but the second one, the one under this uh, that thing, you can copy it to the next ones. So that's cool. Uh, as you can see, now they are copied. And the same is true here. If you want, uh, let's say, I don't know, fast bells, you do the same here. Paste all the things. I mean, you set all the things. And... Uh, you do the second inserter, then copy it over to this. So now this uh, also has the thing. And that's cool. Now let's say you want a, another split section here. These two should be a split, a single split item. What you can do is delete them and get the other thing with two chests. And you basically overlay it like this so that the power pole disappears. Now, this is not connected, but to connect it is easy. You just uh, take the green wire and connect the inserter. And then you take the red wire and connect the inputs of these combinators. And now it's connected and you can set it up again, like the replacing all the shoes with something, but I'm not going to do that, come on. Okay, so we got belts, belts and chests. Let's set the wagon up. It's like uh, just a stack of that, uh, some stacks of these, uh, a couple of those, I guess. And let's say we are happy with our wagon. This is a wagon. Now that we know we need those stacks of stuff, we go in the combinator and say uh, we want that stuff. So like, we want 300 uh, bluebells, we want 200 belts and uh, 50 of this, one stack of this. 
Okay, so we can start to uh, put, turn it on. So now the chest will request the stuff. And we can set the train to go here. This team I Haley, let's go there. Uh, whatever, go. Cool. It doesn't kill me. Great. And now you see, it starts to load. And uh, you can see from the pole, like, if, if you hover over a pole and there are no signals, that, that means that the train is satisfying the requests. So like, uh, if I turn this on, which is the control for this section here, you see now the requests in red are all the stuff, and as soon as the bots deliver the things, the numbers will go down and they will eventually disappear. So there's that. Now, sadly, my, my factory does not have like logistic bots in the, in the network. I mean, so, you know, whatever. It won't fill up, but as you see, some of them are going down. So, yeah, let's see. What can you do else? I mean, all of this that I said is true for the, also the compact modules, the compact blueprints. Where are they? Here it is. Let's see, these are the compact ones. You have a, a, sp a splitter for three, uh, three chests. You can just delete one of the sections and put it over. Or also a two sections, which is like uh, two of these squ squares. Basically, instead of being a vertical row or a long row, it's a square row. So <laughs> it's a square section. I don't know. This regulates this, this regulates this, and etc. So you can just delete these two and paste the two one here. And that's it, basically. What can you do else? You can, if you want, you can get buffer chests and put them like instead of the of the things of the normal chests. And if you want, you can also set the, the, the each chest to request from buffer chests, and you can just copy and paste it to each all the other ones because every chest is the same so if I just paste it everywhere it will just work oh shit I I, I think I didn't, didn't do it correctly but you know you can do that if you want yeah so that's it now how does it work why does it work like this if you want to know the answer keep watching I guess otherwise you can just leave <laughs> because you know it's a long video. So um, how does it work in, in exactly? Basically, we assume that you have a train that matches the requests that are said in here. So like the train has, and the thing has to be equal. So yeah, that's one thing. What happens is like the. Hold on, let me just look at my notes. In the beginning, you set the train and constants. These first two combinators are responsible for the requests that go on the red wire. The decider input takes... Uh, oh, no, wait. The decider takes input from the constant combinators and the arithmetic, which negates the signal from the station. So, yeah, basically what happens is... Uh, this one is the only thing that out outputs on the red wire. And it, it gets input from this, and this other combinator here. This combinator reads the contents of the train and negates it. It multiplies it by negative one. So when they get together, when this and this stuff gets together, you only get the stuff that is missing from the train, basically, what the train needs. And this one so uh, outputs those values on the red wire. It's also set to not output any negative value because uh, we don't need the, any ne negative value in this case, so whatever. That's cool. So, what do the other three combinators do? They regulate the stack size for the inserters. And let's see. Uh, basically, what do they do is like they're set to output 12 
on the green wire if the if the request on the red wire is higher than 12. Like if it's lower than 12 or equal, it will output that request like directly on the green wire, and this basically prevents the uh, the inserters from sticking out like the quote unquote problem I had in the beginning. So basically, that's what they do. See, this one is uh, output one and one multiplied by twelve, so it gives twelve. Or this one says like blah blah blah. Very good. So what else? Uh, what happens to the signals once they are on the lines? Each uh, of these combinators basically isolates one signal to be sent to one. Uh, I mean, to their chests basically. This one rows only connect to one chest, as you can see. Like each of these chests is connected only to one combinator, like and uh, it's a filter basically. Th these combinators are filters for the chests. Because if I had to like connect the the red wire directly to the chests, everything will be requested by all chests simultaneously, and it will be a major fuck up for the boss. They will like go mad or something. I don't know. So that's cool, but what about this thing? This has more combinators because, like, the instead of just passing the value to the chest, this combinator divides it by the number of chests and gives it to each one of them. So that's cool. But uh, if the if the value gets low enough, basically. This combinator turns off some of the stack inserters because otherwise they will stick out and do the problem. And the number of uh, <laughs> the when is low enough. Basically, you multiply the number of inserters by the stack size, and if the value is lower than that, you should turn the others off. So yeah, as you can see, this one is not is never turned off, but all these other ones are. So yeah. This other combinator is uh, is there to prevent a problem, which happens when you have only one item missing. So you have like 99 here, and there is one item being requested. But this combinator says like one uh, divided by six, and that's rounded to zero. So it gives zero requests for that item here, and so the train never gets filled up. So what happens is this combinator reads the request from the red signal, and if it's one it says directly to the chests, uh, give me one of those items. So that's cool. You could put one or input count here, doesn't matter because the, uh, the input count is one, so yeah. So what else is there to say? I hope I said everything. <laughs> oh crap, I, I always forget something, so I don't know. Yeah, you can, uh, I mean, maybe a, an intelligent design for this kind of thing should be like putting green chests here and that is to request from the green chests. So, like, since this is the last one that is active, you uh, it will all, all ask from this one. You know, let's let's see. Yeah, see, uh, now the bots are uh, moving stuff from there to there, and it's good. You know, it's maybe more efficient. I don't know. But yeah, I I I hope that is all. And uh, good luck in setting this up. I don't know if it will ever be useful because it's not a very useful. Uh, <laughs> contraction, but whatever, you know, it's for nitpicky people. See ya in the future, and good luck.